Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gustavo. I am a software developer at Blank Factor. And today we're going to talk about Lisp car images. Uh, the idea, oh, I think I moved something. Yeah. Um, what's going on here is that um, Lisp, Lisp car images are a feature from Lisp since the first standard. And it's basically a way to have like, oh, is the side of it? No, thank it's... you. You read my mind. I like people that <laughs> do that. That's, that's probably not many of those. <laughs> uh, so, uh, a car image is basically a way to wrap binaries in uh, like a, a REPL, a Lisp REPL into a binary with all of the things it needs to run. You can do that either as a way to create uh, an executable or as a way to start up a repo and develop on it. And a lot of the places where I saw people talking about it, they were always saying, hey, theoretically, you could do um, image-based development with it by uh, creating a, a core image repo whenever you get an error and then sending that to the developer. And I mean, that was pretty fascinating for me. If you could theoretically do that, why are we not doing that? Um, why are many people talking about it? I think the the one person that explored this a little bit more was one this one Russian guy, which uh, records video in Russian, but at least he has uh, uh, subtitles. I don't know Russian. And he experimented with that a little bit, but I still wasn't satisfied because he didn't show that on a modern applications and neither um, doing like error running errors on that. So I was like, okay, let's try to do it. And well, the rationale behind it, uh, why this, why am I so much inspired by that? Um, modern uh, software development, like production software development, usually rely on log and code debugging to find errors and things we don't want. So uh, what happens is you're there you're developing, uh, you get an error in production, you open the log file, which is a big uh, text file, and you look for the last error message. You basically search for a string error on the file. And if you get that, if you catch that, okay, that's what's going on. Um, you create a test for it, you solve that, all the things. Or if you're trying to figure out why something is happening in a specific way and you're able to reproduce the error in your environment, you can use debugging, which is executing code and stopping it at a specific moment, uh, telling the process, hey, wait a minute, and looking at whatever is in memory and stuff. So uh, that's how we usually do it. Uh, nothing wrong with it, but it's it's clear this is a problem, right? right? Uh, we When we want to fix something, we would need to find a problem. And if you have better ways to do it, all the better. Um, Common Lisp has this one way, which is uh, using this function save Lisp and die, where you can create uh, the running that specific moment in time where the software was running, uh, and execute it again in your own uh, Lisp uh, repo. So, uh, for example, you can't debug code in production uh, unless you're doing something really fancy, but Usually, you can't like stop uh, an execution. For example, if you're running an app that's asking for food, and you know that when you order food through your app, you get an error, you can't just say tell the user, for example, hey, wait a minute, I'm gonna stop the execution and all this stuff. This doesn't happen in production. But with the save Lisp and die, what we do is we create uh, an executable, or rather a core image with all of the things that are running at this specific moment. And then we could, uh, for example, put it somewhere to the developer telling, hey, we had this error. Here's how the, pro the program looked at the specific moment in time. And then the developer can just look at it and see what's going on. So... I have a comment. Sure. So this is reminding me of having the ability to SSH the Docker image in production. Mm. I. I could imagine something like this, but it's, um, I'd say it's even more um, 
sophisticated because oh, yeah. the Docker image is a, a computer, right? Here, uh, in given all the limitations. And it's, in, here, it's very insecure, in right? Because if you have yeah. access to the Docker image, you have access to the secrets, cookies, passwords. The, mm -hmm. Not all developers should have access to that. Yeah, Maybe no, no, not, no. none of them should have access yes. to that. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, the, yeah, continue. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. You're okay. sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think devs should have access to this shit. But that's uh, okay, for another, another time. <laughs> Okay, so um, this presentation was uh, first uh, thought of in a context where people were very likely not to know Common Lisp. Um, so I talk a little bit of history here. So Common Lisp is a standard that it, we have the ISO and other things. Hey, if you want to have a Common Lisp, you got to implement that. So that's why you have like SBCL, um, what's the name of the other one? A C Lisp. Uh, I Hyper common list, hyper list. No, it is something else. Okay, so there are other common lists. SBCL is just the uh, most battle tested one. Let's say like this. And here's how it looks. Well, we can hello world stuff. Can I run it? Oh, I don't have slide. Okay, let's start slide. Pretty cool. I can do. Oh, hello world. Oh, there's not a uh, slide. Your list. Not this one. Okay, print stuff. Uh, I can do equals. All the goodies. Uh. Oh, sorry. It the return the results are here. Sorry about that. True, not true. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, it's Lisp. And now let's take a look. Oops. Oh yeah. Oop, not true. Writing a bit from my results. Okay, here I am. So let's see a little bit of uh, more specific work. So, how can we make this thing a uh, error? Can just divide by zero. We get uh, divide by zero. This is an error. Um, oops. We can run this in the REPL. So. Oh, actually, I defined the function there. I didn't run it yet. Let's see if I have it here. Divide by, I divide one by zero. I get this. So arithmetic error, division by zero signals, tells the operation, all this stuff. That's pretty OK. Oops, I think I killed the REPL. Um, and to get this error like to catch as in java catching an exception you could do this so handler case the operation you're doing and then in case of error like this any error you get you can have like a co message or whatever you want and do get you can get whatever treatment you want here oops i still have my repo uh, not sure oh no i killed my repo my bad i'll run it again Why? Okay, I'll create the function again. Um, okay. And then if I run this, instead of giving me an exception, it just prints me, uh, you should not divide by zero. Um, so uh, this is. Okay, we know how to handle errors. Now, how can we do this in a way that if we get an error, we create the executable wrapper for it? Let's call it like that. So, more specifically, uh, an image. Because, um, you know, we know that uh, finding by zero gives an error, so we don't get a lot from it. So, we have the first program here. Mm. I'll create a file for us. Uh, basic, basic Lisp. Let's call it like this. I'm gonna do this. So what's going on here? Don't is... forget to increase the size of that. Oh my bad. 
So I just copied that. And what's going on here is we get the input, like in the, what we're going to get in the terminal. And then we get everything that's after the, the program name and feed it to list, to common lisp, to make it run as if in a function. I'll show you in a moment what's going on. And next up, so this is the main function. The next up, this is a this is how a common lisp is a packet right in the in its uh, down the uh, under the hood. So we run save lisp and die. We give it name. We tell hey it is executable. So you can't like load it into lisp. You can just run it and tell hey what's the main function? My entry point, which is default main. So gonna do this. Load it. Ooh. Oh, I I can't do that because oh, I'll tell you in a moment. Otherwise, I'm gonna spoil stuff. Uh, confirm. Oops, I created a buffer. Okay. Uh, SPCL load. So right, can you better can you see this? Okay, now you can. Right? Can you see the the terminal here? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. What I'm gonna do here is I'll load this basic list file and uh, it will create the executable for us. Let me just remove. I, I think I had some. Okay. Load. I, I had some leftover uh, work. Uh, it's basic dash lisp dot lisp. Uh, it's saving the lisp image, and then I have the calc uh, thing here. It's quite big because uh, you need to have a lot of stuff to run the uh, lisp code. So it's that's expected. And now what we can do, for example, is this. Oops. There you go. We have get you there. Um, so I can do basic uh, math operations here. That's why I'm calling calc here. For example, divide uh, two by oh, four by two. Okay, there so I go. have a question. Sure. So my understanding is that you made an executable that is essentially grabbing the arguments from the command line mm -hmm. and doing a val yeah. on them. Mm -hmm. So this That's is like calculated it. with common Lisp semantics. Yeah, it, it's just a, a basic small application. It's um, you could call it an, an old school uh, terminal application. That's my idea to why I created this first thing. It's uh, the first example of how we could use save lisp and die, but uh, now we're going to use it to grab errors. So, uh, first thing, oops, gotta go down there. So we load this into SBCL, we just did that. If we run, we can run additions, subtractions, divisions, all the stuff. Now we can do the same thing. Now I can, if I divide by zero, we get a big ass error. Um, oh, it's not that big. Okay, Ar arithmetic error division by zero signaled. Uh, it tells me, hey, you can uh, abort it. Uh, that that's what's going on here. It enters um, common lisp exception um, error management. Let's say like this. If it was another kind of program, it would allow me, for example, to retry with different parameters or other stuff. Uh, I can just exit here, which is what I just do. Now let's uh, change it a little bit. What we're gonna do is use uh, this way of treating now. So we don't know what the user is gonna give us, right? The user is um, it's pretty smart. So he likes to try new stuff. 
So let oops, I don't have a lot of stuff here. Uh, let's load a basic Lisp here with this new um, new setup here. What we do is we get the form. So I kind of do a little formatting here with the symbols we're getting. Create a form, and then try to evolve this form, but handling the error case we could get. Um, and then we just uh, print print it out. So I think we just print out error in this case because I removed the uh, C format here. So let's see. I'm not hundred percent sure. Okay. Uh, now we do calc and divide by zero. We just get error and nil, which is the return of the program. So it's not very useful, right? But now we can uh, treat the error and do whatever we want here. Um, so what if we, for example, had a var, which we call errors. It's a, like, uh, it would be like global. So anyone can access it and it's cool and easy to access. We could do it in many other ways. And then we set the form, which was, uh, which we were trying to evolve. So if we get an error, we get it, we send it to errors and then we save Lisp and die. So we are creating another executable here, but this one, we are not passing the executable T here, neither the top level main, because it's not an, an executable uh, program. It's just like, um, it's a way to start, um, a common Lisp REPL, but from a specific context, which is the context of our application. So just copy this. Simple and easy. Basic, I guess. Okay, we'll create a new one now. And you can do calc um, again, then divide by zero. You get an error. Um, I'm calling it calc error. Let's see if it's here. It is, and we just created that. So now uh, we have a, a, a core image file that can be run, but not as an executable, but as a, as a context, as a REPL context. Uh, we are using a different pro, uh, parameter to do that, which is core. So it's BCL dash dash core calc error. And then, okay, this is a REPL. We get all the things in common list here. But now we can see what's going on in errors. We should have an errors variable here. And we do so. Uh, this could be like much more. You know, should have a, it could have a lot of more information, but this paints the. This gives a us idea what's going on. Now, we know that we had this had an error in production, and what the user was trying to do is he was trying to divide by zero. Uh, of course, uh, this could be any other errors. This could be not. More, uh, more clear to have error like inputting uh, too much uh, strings that are too large or a bug in our program, whatever was going on. But this is a more, much more sophisticated way to see errors instead of having to look into logs and trying to read at what moment uh, an error happened. We could just grab it and load in a function in our program. And then when our program had an error, we could reload the whole program at a specific moment and just see what's going on. So it's pretty cool, I guess. I, I, I liked a lot this result of this part, at least. Um, and But what we're doing here, it's kind of uh, cheating in a way, because this is not a very um, real world application. Uh, most applications currently are either multi-threading or web applications. They have a lot of stuff going on. So this is not the real world, let's say. Maybe, maybe if you were working on a, a terminal-specific environment, but um, I, 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 would, I, I can't say most developers actually do that. I think um, mo most work is basically an HTTP server with uh, a database or something. So. Uh, we have that. 
let's uh, do something else. I, I took the liberty to say, hey, uh, the most basic case of it would be a web server, right? Uh, something you can just uh, request, give a get request or something like this. We could put a database there, but I cut corners here. So what we're gonna do is create a simple web server. Let's change everything here. Oop. Then, okay, what's going on is we first load QuickLisp, which is the common Lisp uh, package manager. Uh, it's user created, so you can just uh, start stuff here. You don't need to kill the repo stuff. It's something pretty cool from old school languages. And then we create a, a, a get, uh, an HTTP, uh, we, we HTTP get here, where we can uh, receive a name. So loading quick lisp. Wait. OK, uh, I have repo. Uh, Hunchin Tut is uh, the library I'm using to create web server. I'm defining the uh, URL here, which is yo, and then we can start a server. We go here. Oh, hello, everyone. Low screen from them, and then hey, Gustavo. Hey, Gustavo, and there you go. Uh, okay, so this is our simple modern web application. We can get, send a get to the, the server. Now let's simulate an error. Just slap throw here. Don't need to divide by zero or anything. So, oops. Uh, let's see if I, I think if I just load this and then run the request again. Okay, yeah. I get it. Okay, now, uh, if we check, we're starting to get a lot of um, um, a lot of showing screens. Sorry. Yeah. So this is the repo. Um, we see we sent we received the request here, but we throw through an error here. So error could not finish request. That's what's going on. Cool. Uh, now we're going to catch this error and try to create a core image. It's getting a, bit, a little bit longer. Um, geez, sorry, spoil do. Um, I'll copy this to make my life easier. Explain on the go. A little bit much better now. Uh, Okay, loading the setup, uh, uh, loading quick lisp. We have the errors variable. We load hunch and toot. We have this new function print and format, and we will just send an error here. And we will run this function, catch the error, set whatever error is going on here, and save lisp and die. Again, it's called error. But, uh, okay. So I'll slide with all buffer. Uh, actually, I have a problem if I do this. Let's do it step by step. We create this new one. Ooh, I am. And reload this. Um. Okay. Now we get new stuff. We sent the request, received the request, uh, but then we get this big error here. This is probably, oh, I think you can't read that. Failed error as we thread, thread in split. It's probably a bug in this sales file. Well, so what happens is um, save Lisp and die uh, will create the, the executable and then kill a common lisp. But what happens here is this is in another thread and this function only works in a single thread environments. So since it, it couldn't uh, kill the thread, we always get this kind of nasty errors here. 
and uh, it's actually kind of sad that we can't uh do it this way um what i did to explore this a little bit more so okay uh Uh, I got another error this time. I think I have to reload the REPL. Let me just try it, because this is the correct error, actually. So. I have a question. <clears throat> sure. So my understanding is that save, lisp, and die in the web server, they are running two different threads, but you cannot save and die from a different thread. Yeah, uh, <laughs> let me... It, uh... Hunch and Toot creates a web server. Uh, the, the web server runs in like uh, another thread from the main program. No, so the so... server is running on a separate thread. The main thread is still the one that's going to run the save, lisp, and die. No, so uh, this is also another thread because we have like the, there's like main thread. Yes. Then I, it will create the server and the server who have its worker threads whenever it gets a request. Sure. So that's what happens. Uh, Safe Lisp and I has to be run on a worker thread because that's where uh, the get comment is mm -hmm. being received. Yes. So uh, we are trying to run Safe Lisp and I from here. But that doesn't work because it's a, it's a, in a worker instead of the main thread. Exactly, ah, and more more specifically, it's because it's a multi-thread environment. So if, even if I was here in, a, in the main function, uh, the main thread, it wouldn't be able to because uh, save this and I is not equipped to uh, recreate the whole thing uh, from a single thread. So it can only do its stuff. Yeah, but that would be like insane if you could, right? I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I guess kind of crazy. Uh, I I kind of surge a, a bit on that, but it seems like the ISO standard is actually only to be able to start stuff from single thread. So okay, okay, it's, but it's thank expected. you. Now now I understand the problem. Thank you. Sure, no no worries. I can I do this? Ah, there we go. Um, where was where was I? Okay. So. Ah, let's let me try to reproduce this specific error. Uh, I think I got the other one because I was uh, playing too much with the rebel here. Okay. Evolve buffer. Okay, now. Cannot save core with multiple multiple threads running. We see here main thread, reader threads, link. The, yeah, there is also this problem. So, um, uh, I'm using Slink is something from Sly, so you can't uh, do this kind of thing with the uh, with a lot of threads going. Uh, so it kind of makes a little bit hard to do this kind of development with uh, Emacs. Slink is also another thread. So Sly is another thread. All of this stuff. There's a lot of things going on uh, together with Hunch and Toot and uh, uh, and common list uh, and emacs. So one way, one way people actually do this kind of development with uh, emacs is whenever they run save lisp and die, and they usually do this when they have very heavy environments. So they need to load a bunch of different dependencies and when they start the repo again, it takes a long while to load everything and or maybe download depending. They create like uh, one image that has everything loaded, so it's much quicker to start repo again. But what they do is they queue all the threads and then save Lisp and die. In the case of um, uh, sorry, in, in the case of developing in Emacs, so using either Sly or Slime, uh, and let's try to do that in our case. So that was kind of scary. Let's try to force a little bit. And here's, here's where things get a little bit different. Okay. I'll 
kill my slice again. There's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know it yet. Starting slide. Um, yeah, let me explain some stuff here. So we got this new big function where we try to queue everything but the current thread. So on, I lost that, but you saw that we got, we had some, uh, we had some threads, right? We had a uh, conscient tooth worker, uh, slice stuff, a bunch of things. What we're going to do here is, is using this, uh, I think it's Birdo threads. We are grabbing the threads and removing all of them but the current. So all but current, remove if lambda string equals they have to, if they have the same name. This is poorly formatted, sorry. So if they have the same name, uh, we're going to same name we're searching for. Oh, this is weird. Remove if. I think this is wrong actually. Um, probably save the code wrong because in this case I'm gonna ah no this is correct. Um, I'm gonna remove only if it's the current thread. So I'll remove it from list and then I'll destroy it. So and how we are going to use this function is if we have an error, uh, which we will have because we're forcing it here. We're going to set stuff to errors, queue all but the current thread, and then save lisp and die. So, evolve buffer, loading hatch into it. We got, we got our port here. We got our server running. Oops. Then, oh God. Yeah. So, uh, this is actually newer, so. I wonder if, well, um, you see, we, we got a more complicated errors here. I should have a, a talk error being created, but it's trying to delete all of the threads, which includes the main thread. So it's kind of a suicide going on because the worker thread, which is the main thread, is actually the child of main which is child of Hanchen Tut listener. Uh, oh, sorry, the opposite. Hanchen Tut listener is parent of uh, our current thread, which uh, whose parent is the main thread. And then um, if we can, oh, yeah, that's what it gets. So uh, I couldn't run this because when I tried to kill the main thread, I also uh, killed myself in a sense. So this is not a proper way to do that. Uh, and so this doesn't work, right? Uh, we can't do it this way. Another way we could try is um, killing all the killing all the threads, including the main one, sorry, killing all but the main thread and then running this. But then we would have the same problem um, because, uh, I'm going, if I kill, uh, the thread that's running this, I kill them, uh, all but the main thread, uh, I, I would, I would never reach this point. So. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So you need to run the kill everybody else from the main one. Otherwise you're going to fail. Yeah. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not even sure if there's a way to properly do that. Um, maybe if you design your application in a very fancy way, but I, I try to think but in a lot of cases it starts to get like uh, the uh, the chicken and the egg history. So uh, who who came before? And if I kill the chicken, I won't have the egg, but if I kill the egg, I won't have the chicken. So uh, and I try to do it here. So uh, yeah, that's what I get. By the way, cannot destroy. Cannot destroy current thread, which yeah, so you can destroy your stuff. Um, yeah, let me show you. Just it's funny stuff. Mm. 
Um, oops, let me recuse lie once again. And this, those are the, those two are look a lot like each other. Uh, the only thing is I'm scanning um, this is like rejects. So if we have main thread, which is the name of the thread, it will not kill it. Um, did I evolve stuff? Okay. So, oops. Yeah, get internal server error and you know destroy current thread. See, it's, it tries to destroy hunting to the listener, and then it tries to destroy worker thread, but that's an error. And then it just keeps going. Yeah, maybe it will die at some point. I can run it again, cool. Because I signaled the, uh, I think the listener is this, yeah, the listener is the server. I think if, since I signaled the destruction of it, uh, it might be the case that I, um, the server will die. Um, yeah, see, it's uh, I'm trying to twist uh, the how it works a little bit. Um, but well, if if this was possible in modern applications, I think it would be uh, uh, pretty cool. Like, it's a it's a more sophisticated way to approach debugging. Um, but uh. You can only use that on the specific case of single thread uh, applications. So this is a limitation. The, the idea of this talk is like just to show uh, this cool feature, which is available since Lisp 1.0. So it's kind of from the how they design Lisp in the first place, which is pretty cool, I guess. And it's something uh, very alien if compared to what we have in uh, modern programming languages. I, there, there was a thread on Clojure Google Groups where they even suggested uh, Richiki to add that, but I think he never did. So even when comparing with um, uh, neo-modern Lisps, we, uh, we don't have the, the usage of this kind of thing, which is, uh, I mean, it's something pretty cool. Uh, you could make, uh, you could argue that if we, don't use it. Maybe it's actually not that cool, but. Uh, no, but no, that's not a good thing to yeah. say now. Because mm -hmm. if it, we could, you, we, we can't use it because there's limitations around it. But if you could, then mm -hmm. we would be able to evaluate if it's gr its greatness. Yeah, uh, it's something from kind of an old language. So, uh, on our, our on our day and age, we the we expect applications to be multi-thread. So. No, uh, maybe it's maybe we have the technology to do this kind of thing now, and maybe we, with the proper research and effort, we could have a way to recreate a whole context that is multi-thread. It would be nice. Oh yeah. Uh, Are you uh, yeah, well, want something to yeah, say? I have two things to say. Uh, first, I'm pretty sure Smalltalk also is pretty heavy into image-based development, so they have similar things to this, but um, it's another old language, you know, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. The second uh -huh. thing is that this reminds me a lot of save states in emulators, actually. Oh, when you're playing the game mm. and you save and export and then you can replay it from that point onwards? Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. It's like a low-level save the checkpoint, right? Yeah. Yep. I see. I see. You're uh, right. Uh, yeah. So I have I, I have a comment as well. So I think this is what you're presenting here. Assuming that the dreamland would be achievable, would be pretty close to what I did in one of my jobs with SSH, mm -hmm. Docker image, and in Kubernetes. But you see how many things I had to count. These are three moving parts. Mm -hmm. In in your stuff is only one thing. And it's, a, it's yeah. the same tooling using to develop the application itself. Um, you know, something comes to mind, actually. Is there something like save Lisp and don't die? Because that would be very handy as well. Yeah, I think <laughs> Don't die. I, I, yeah, save Lisp and live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I searched for that. Uh, I, I couldn't find it. 
um, I read that the save list part is something very down, uh, very down the hood. So it I see. grabs a lot of stuff. It wraps a lot of things that makes it very hard to not die, which is interesting. Um, I, I didn't check the code to see how this works. I wonder if I am able to actually. Like, yeah, no, but uh, that's 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 very cool. I I was wasn't aware. I, actually, now that I, that I think about it, because it's a REPL driven development, it kind of makes sense that you should be able to have a snapshot of a state of a REPL and then just load it back again. But I never thought in a way that you describe it, which is that production is broken, mm -hmm. and there's a bunch mm -hmm. of hoops to get in there. But instead of doing that, yeah. you just download the image from that production is running. And you're running in a REPL instead of having to do what I just said, right? Move more moving parts, more technologies involved. Uh, probably uh, you have to learn more documentation because it's more technology. Uh, mm -hmm. All that stuff, you could just use the same tooling that you're already using to develop the application. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I like this approach actually, like being more conservative of what you use. Yeah, it's basically uh, what Jian taught us as well. It's, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, because Jian's talk was about less yeah. dependencies, mm -hmm. right? More uh, yes. y use what you already have, uh, mm -hmm. and, and that can go far. I, I would say that you can go too far, and reach a point <laughs> of diminishing returns. But there's 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 length to go still, and people yeah, just there's a party or a, par a parito. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, there's something. something yeah, there's a, there's math in that. But I, I think you're going. Rule. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Maybe we're not to, to the eighty uh, up, up yet, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think your your proposal is is following exactly what Jean's, Jean's idea was, which is be careful with extra dependencies. Let's just invest more time in making these Lisp core images more reliable and, and robust using with multi-threaded uh, libraries and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the not specifically in common list because it follows a pattern, right? It follows a standard, and it's very unlikely that we're able to change that. Yes. But when designing new languages, or rather, when evaluating uh, language features and all this kind of stuff, maybe instead of looking at what's just new and trendy, uh, look at the past and see what they were doing. You know, oh yeah. Some guys yeah. were. Very, Programmers much better than we yeah, were. Every so. every time people uh, get anxious about, oh man, I'm using X and it has rot reloading. I'm just I'm just like, yeah yeah, they did that already like 30 years ago or something. In the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> so they they did that mm -hmm. many many years ago. So you looking at the past, mm -hmm. you can properly and better evaluate what is actually like super innovative, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I completely agree with you. There's there's much many many things old things that are cool that we people unfortunately yeah. don't get to touch and play with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any more comments or questions, people? Nothing comes to mind. Okay. Unfortunately. So I'm gonna finish the recording now. Cool.